Okay, I finally took a break from working, which means I'm gonna be late on my promise to get the review done by Friday. But anyway, uh, probably I'll work hard. Anyway, uh, Miles and I saw The Amazing Spider-Man today because I figured I kind of owed it to myself and to you guys because it's gonna be one of those kind of nerdy type movies that I really should see. I wanted to see it. I was gonna finish my review later, but anyway. So, uh, where to start with this one? Um. You know, I, I, I guess my mindset with this one was, I, I saw the trailers, and you, you probably heard me kind of groan, um, and I think I remember saying, I don't care how good it is, I'm just so tired. You know, I was like, uh, I'm so tired of the remakes and the, uh, um, the, the, the excessive origin stories, you know. You know, how many times can we tell the, the beginning of Spider-Man? And it, it's, it's partially because I've read so many comic books, you know, in my time. I've seen Spider-Man rebooted at least twice, you know, and part of it stems from my own frustrations with the comic book series at large. Uh, it, it sounds silly, but, you know, the One More Day series really killed uh, a lot of my love for the Spider-Man character. It sounds weird, but it, it did. You know, One More Day was that bad, and the immediate aftermath of it. But, uh, you know, I, I, you got to kind of put that aside for this movie and kind of judge it on its own merits. So, uh, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it, didn't love it. Mm. I, I guess if I had a short review, I just wish it were Spider-Man 4 instead of another... Because, okay, I, I, I kind of share the same thing, but I don't want to be a curmudgeon. But I can just say... You can have a reboot and not tell the origin story. If you just want to have it no. to where uh, Peter Parker is in high school and you just establish that he's got his powers, you can do that. That's kind of what the Incredible Hulk did. Yeah. It, they had like five minutes where they said, Here is, here's how he got his powers and now he's the Hulk. And that was, that was actually the example that got me kind of over that bad mood was I hated it. The original Ang Lee's Hulk. I hated it. And so they remade that shit, what, like two, two and a half, three years later? Something like that. And I was like, really? Rebooting? But you know what? That movie, that, that Hulk was so bad it needed a reboot. And it was good. I liked it. I, I think I, people shat on the Incredible Hulk for some reason. I thought it was perfectly serviceable. It was exactly what I expected from a Hulk movie. But, um, so I was like, you know, I have no great love for the the original Spider-Man trilogy. You know, looking back on it, actually, I don't like him that much. I still like him. Well, I, the first two, I hated the third. I, you course. know, looking back, I, 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 I'm probably going to draw flag for this. I don't think they're that good. At all. Um, I remember thinking they were passable back in the day, but honestly, they have not aged well. They're cheesy. They're... Uh, it really proved that Sam Raimi was not the right director for this franchise at all. Uh, and uh, I, I honestly think Tobey Maguire is terrible as Peter Parker. He spent every, every fucking moment of those movies crying and whining, attempting that atrocious New York accent of his. Well, it's, it's kind of Andrew Garfield in this movie. He's, he's always crying. I don't think one. so. I don't think so. Because at least, no, at least when he's emotional, it, it doesn't seem like he's wretched and pathetic. It seems like he's actually channeling it towards... Something. I thought he was way better than Tobey Maguire. Now, come on. I thought Tobey was terrible, but that's just me. Um, so, you know, yeah, you could have you done this as Spider-Man 4, and, and I, I, I think Oreo was freaking her shit out. Um, you no, know, the origin story, honestly, is well done. Because uh, this is where the, the kind of letdown for me was we, we started going into it, and I... I just kind of settled into my seat and let out a sigh because it's because I it's just getting your vegetables so you can get to your meat. No, because no, I actually I really disagree because I thought I honestly thought the first act is by far the strongest part of the movie. I really did. It, it's still well told. I'll, I'll grant you that. And, but you've seen the, it, you know. But I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that fatigue that I was talking about that was setting in where. It, it's you've seen the origin story, you know, you know how it goes, and so you've read it, you've watched it, you've watched it again, and, and all this stuff. So, like, how many times can Peter Parker get bit by the fucking spider? But putting that aside, I thought it was great. I thought that that initial sequence where, um, you know, it, it, it the weakest part of the origin story 
was always the web shooters. Always. And so that's was that, that was like the one thing I, I liked about the the Sam Raimi Spider-Man series was that it just made the web shooters organic. Because it made sense. You know, I was like, why would he have to... Spider-Man. He has he's Spider-Man, he has spider powers, he can cling to a wall and shoot <laughs> fucking webs. You know, that, that just made sense to me. It made more sense, I think, than the original comic where he just happened to be really smart and decided he should have web shooters and so invented something that nobody on the face of the earth had, had possibly come up with before this. So, you know... Yeah, I guess I'm one of the few that, that stood up for that as a smarter choice. Because apparently other people were... Shouting betrayal at that. Now, now I know people are going to say like, "Oh, well, it's a comic. What the fuck you expect?" Now, I said it was closer. I liked it. I liked just the idea of the organic web shooters better, and I liked it so much. I wondered why why Dicko it was Dicko and Stanley didn't think of that. You know, why didn't they think of like, well, Spider Man sticks to walls. Why can't he shoot webs? You know, why does he have to make the fucking wrist launchers to do it? Now, I know like if he really had spider powers, he would be launching webs out of his anus. But you know. We're, Whatever. What I was also expecting with this edition of uh, mechanical web shooters that somewhere in the movie would factor in that he'd run out, mm. or that they would be faulty or, or something. I think that would have been a moment that would have just been unnecessary. You know, especially since they established that the little canisters can hold like hundreds of yards of this shit. So I was just expecting him fighting lizard and. Well, wanting to rely on the, the webs, but he's running low or I something. Know. I mean, if you're going to make that, if you're going to make it a plot device, I'm kind of just expecting that you use it. That seems nitpicky to me because I like I, I actually like the way they established the web shooters because it was you know something Oscorp was making. Doctor Connors is working on this cross gene manipulation thing. You know, he's he's doing all this research and just one of the products of this research is the is the Wonder Web or whatever, and Peter kind of steals it. <laughs> But whatever, it was like it made sense to me that he that he took this thing and figured, you know it, it was just far enough where I was like okay he could figure that out you know he could he could figure out this this thing to make this web and a little web shooty thing all right fine and that's why I think the first act is so strong is because there's it actually it's actually very tight in how it establishes him as a very smart kid and you know he's picked on again Flash Thompson's actually they gave Flash. Uh, Flash Thompson a, a more depth than I would have given them credit for because it, you know by the end he actually kind of uh, he's he's a bully and he, he picks on people but you know when when Uncle Ben dies spoilers when Uncle Ben dies he actually does kind of go like dude I'm sorry about that yeah I, I, seriously that sucks man you know but um th there were there were problems with the movie but I, I really don't think the the acting was I thought far superior to, to the Sam Raimi version just and I know this is my own bias against Toby where I thought I I really thought Toby sucked and I thought Andrew Garfield wasn't yeah I thought he was way better um the hair I don't get the hair <laughs> but I look at me I should talk right no um uh where do I go from here um I guess, I guess, um, okay, the, the, the issues I had with the storytelling, and this seemed like some stuff that, um, I'm not nitpicking when I, when I bring these up, I, I really think maybe the, the script could have gone through another draft, because there was elements of it that, that just kind of raised questions, or elements that are dropped completely, and elements that are just outright fucking hilariously bad. Get to that one. For one... I actually like the fact that, they, that 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 the lizard was the villain in this one because we, you know, um, and and it the Doctor Connors thing helped establish the whole the whole pseudoscience behind it. Uh, the 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 one part I, I guess if I had a problem, it's that, and it's probably a big one, but it's that the lizard's story felt like it was on the back burner and not given time at at any point. I mean, when you're going through the story, it's, okay, Peter Parker, his parents, they're, they're dead for some mysterious reason. Peter Parker tries to find out answers. He becomes Spider-Man. He tries to track down Uncle Ben's killer. It's, it's all about Peter, 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 well, Peter. It's a Spider-Man movie. Of dude. course, but what I'm saying is you're focusing all on his origin story, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, shit, we need a villain. I disagree. Uh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought Dr. Connors was well done. Why are we... Nobody asked how he lost the arm. <laughs> well, they... It just... It's so confusing because... 
they try to pin him to Peter Parker's parents death he but they don't though. but they don't explain it they they try no, they to dude they, they did. don't they told totally where did. when evil indian guy was threatening him to get the serum ready for Norman Osborn. They Osborne. say he's connected, but they don't say how. They do. He worked with the. He worked with Peter's father on the whole gene splicing shit. They, there was a scene. But he, I know he worked with them. Yeah. But you're. I'm saying he's somehow implicated in their death, and they don't say shit. It's called subtlety. It's just subtle Indian guy for some reason, and or. or the evil Indian guy who, for some, I never knew his name. By the way, he's yeah, he's just evil Indian guy. He's just like, oh, you, you, you know, you killed Peter's parents. No, he didn't really? say he killed Did Peter's I? parents. He said he was involved with the project and that the, the project wasn't progressing fast enough. So he was implicated in some shady dealings that the Parkers disagreed with, and they had to flee, and then the plane crashed. That's what they're talking about. Dude, you, did you go to the bathroom or something during that? But they're somehow making it like he's the smoking gun. And if you're going... Yes! If you're going... No, it was him and the uh, and, and Oscorp. They yeah. were doing They were doing illegal science. And the Parkers didn't like that. What What do you need? But he's, he's basically saying that you helped kill Parker's yes. parents. Yes! How? What do you mean, how? It was he, involved Okay, with... he's doing science, okay? He's what off you doing science-y did... things. Did you, did you want to see a scene where, like, where, like, K Kirk Connors is in the fucking plane, and he, like, hijacks the plane, and he's like, I'm gonna steer this thing into a fucking mountain, ha, 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 and then he jumps out of parachute? What the fuck do you want? But, okay, here's, here's Doc Connors, okay? He's doing science -y ah! things. He's doing science-y things, and Parker's parents don't like it. And so he's like, I don't like what you're doing. And he leaves. And Connor is still doing his science-y thing. And they die way off over there. Okay, how did Connor kill him? He didn't. He didn't do anything. Okay, so why is he offended when, when the Indian guy goes, because Oh, you, you, you're as deep into this as I am. No, because it's implied that in the past he was doing some illegal things to get the research put through. I don't know, illegal human trials, falsifying reports... Misappropriation of funds or research? I don't know, but, okay, it, but it's you're... not important. <laughs> it goes into what he's thinking. Why are you so mired on this point? Because that's the ex whole reason why he becomes lizard. He he's like, you can't do this. This is wrong. Because the evil Indian guy goes, oh, we can't. Uh, we need this because uh, Norman Osborn's dying. I guess I'll go down to the local VA and just shoot up some veterans. And he's like, that's wrong. And he's like, oh, are you now growing a conscience? Yes, and I'm expecting him to go like, yes, when have I ever done something wrong? In the past when he was desperate to get his fucking arm back. That's why he did the whole research. He was driven, obsessed by the need to get his fucking arm back. I get that, but he's never done anything evil up to this point. Except he was implicit in illegal research. How? Which... How what? He's doing research. How is research illegal? It is when you do illegal human trials and shit. Or Which he's to... never done that before. You, that's what they said they did. He's done it on mice. Now, but... <laughs> so he was illegal, but now he's not illegal anymore. Yes. <laughs> he's done... So why is human testing all of a sudden evil for him? Because you have to go through years of FDA approval before you can attempt human trials in any medication. No, but I'm saying... Why is he now all of a sudden offended by human trials when in the past he wasn't? Why not? Because he's he's guilt stricken over his involvement in in the Parker's death. He didn't. Maybe he didn't expect. Maybe, Why? <laughs> maybe he didn't expect Norman Osborn to go as far as he did in killing the parents. Maybe he felt responsible for that. Maybe he's only working at the company out of some uh, extortion or blackmail scheme. Like like if you if you go if you tell anybody, I'll expose you or something like that. Maybe you should have explained. They did explain. <laughs> they didn't because I'm you... questioning it. I got it. <laughs> I got that. There was like two scenes where they established the loss of the arm and the fucking the guilt he felt over the like when when Peter visits him at his house. He's like, "I'm sorry, I didn't call. I was just so angry at the Parkers. Maybe because the Parker family didn't want to do these illegal shady things, and that's why they got kicked out of the project. And because they knew too much, or because they uh, because he wouldn't give over the secrets of the formula, they had him killed." 
explained. No, it wasn't. Because Connor... Yeah, apparently it was because I got it! No, you're making it up in your mind. No! <laughs> I didn't make it up. I got that from the movie, which had three scenes that very clearly spelled it out for me. Nothing has ever said that he did anything illegal. <laughs> He's doing research, okay? Yes. He's doing research. And? It's science. How, you know... You can do illegal science. Believe me, motherfucker, you can. <laughs> He's off researching. I don't, you know... They never mentioned he did illegal human trials. They never mentioned that he did things unethical. Up to that point... They did because... You just said the evil Indian guy implied that he did unethical things. They said it, but he didn't do anything. The only reason they gave for, for why Robert's parents, by, by Peter Parker's parents left is because they didn't like the implications of what, what they were building. You don't know that. How'd you get that? Because they said that. You know, this is a relatively minor point. What I, the that, ultimate point I'm getting to... It bothered you the whole movie, didn't it? No, but what I'm ultimately <laughs> getting to but you're, is that... They oh, know. my fault. Okay. Yes, it is. What I'm saying is that they didn't spend enough time with Lizard. They want to make him a good guy, but they don't. They want to make him a tragic character, but they don't know how to do it. They didn't really, because as soon as he they became... They didn't, because as no. soon as he took the injection, he becomes batshit crazy. No, no, he's like, uh, as soon as he takes the lizard, he's like, I like this. <laughs> the writers were just conflicted about what they wanted. No, if, if I had a problem with those scenes, it's A, I never knew that fucking guy's name evil Indian guy, and two, the, he seemed like an unnecessary character for one reason. All he ever did was come down around to Dr. Connors' office and he goes, Norman Osborn is dying, you need to hurry the fuck up. And Connors is like, I know, dude, I'm working on it. He's dying real fast, you need to hurry up even more. And then he leaves. So, like, if all he is is Norman Osborn's, like, like I don't even know, like, executive or something like that, why couldn't you just write Norman Osborn into this movie to come down himself or call or something like I, I, I guess they didn't want to cast the movie at this point because I, they yeah. he's entering the office Spider-Man's entering the office building and they got a hologram of, of Norman Osborn but it's this blacked out yeah, generic head that makes like sense you're, like you're create a character in a in a video game but it's not like you couldn't just recast the like fuck they did that with shit they did it with the the Avengers and nobody cared yeah I it but wouldn't yeah, have been that big of a point. I, it, it just seemed it just seemed strange to me that they kept having this character who you know I, I guess it makes sense because Norman's so rich and powerful that he deals through intermediaries. But it would have been you know I, at some point I was just like why doesn't Norman get off his ass? Like why isn't Norman on the phone to Connor saying like I'm fucking dying you asshole? Because she's dying. I or what's he dying? Of? It would have been good to know what he's dying of. I'm guessing it's some kind of like cancer or some shit. But. Um, yeah, and that that was actually the the one of the things I'm talking about where the script seemed to need revisions was I was like, is this character really necessary when instead you could just have Norman coming down? And I know, it, it, in a way, again, it, it does kind of build with his character as being all powerful and scary executive and super rich and things like that. Or maybe they just wanted to keep Osborn out of the movie because it raised the specter of the original Green Goblin. I don't know. That just seemed like a weird plot element. And, and what I didn't get was uh, they that, they just kind of forget about that character at some point. Where I, I was really kind of fuzzy on this one, where he steals the formula and he's driving to driving to do to shoot up a bunch of old people. Yeah, no, no, no. Was was he trying to test it or was he just trying to deliver the shit right to Norman Osborn? He, <clears throat> he was taking it to the VA at ten o'clock at night to shoot up some old people. Well, he was. Well, okay. Here's the first thing. You misunderstood that scene in one way, where he was like, he was like, we need to start human trials, and he's like, that's insane, it's not tested on animals yet, where are you gonna, like, who would be insane enough to do that? And he goes, well, maybe if I went to the VA hospital, you'd find some amputees who'd be perfectly willing to try this shit. Now, he wasn't saying he was gonna go down there to hospital beds, going, ah, 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 ah. does it work? <laughs> No, he was going to be down there and be like, ha, 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 ha. I'm not, he's evil Indian guy. He's, he's like, evil. I'm evil Indian guy. Anyone want to try a regeneration serum? No, they would have been, he still would have been evil and unethical and, and fucking crazy. But you, you were like raising this specter, like he sneaks in through the window and starts jamming needles and the people go, ha, 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 ha. It works. It works. 
<laughs> oh, I was so much fun. Just when I drove the Parker's plane into a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been strange to explain to people if if people amputees started growing back their limbs through these human trials. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> but anyway, that was the big that was the big time constraint where Norman Osborne is dying of something, and so that uh, well, like that whole scene confused me because I didn't know where he was taking it. For one, was he really serious about going to the VA and like shooting people up? <laughs> I, I didn't know. Like, how does he get in? How does he does he go to the waiting room? Like, hey, who all here lost an arm, huh? <laughs> Anyone here get a limb blown off? Yeah, you over here. Take this. <laughs> how you feel? Feel good? I, I mean, I, my flu's better and my leg is better. It's like, oh <laughs> shit! Like, so like, let's let's say it worked or it didn't work. You've still got this guy at the VA who is a identifiable, like injecting people. Like, and so like, best case scenario, arms grow back, and like everyone recognizes this motherfucker as the guy who illegally injected them with shit. He's in deep shit. Or B. He injects them with this stuff, they die or turn into horrible lizard monsters. In any event, you've still got this guy directly linked to, like, a horrible fucking crime against humanity. I didn't... I was like, okay, so he's either, he's either taking the VA, or... He's ta I thought he was taking the Norman Osborn, but if he's taking the Norman Osborn, why isn't he just in the Oscorp building? I don't know, and so, so, like, the lizard goes on this rampage, and he's throwing cars off the fucking bridge. Spider-Man's coming down, and he's... he's Rescuing the cars, which, by the way, I, that, that would have been another good scene to establish how he knows he can support the weight of a car. Like, they establish that he's really fucking strong, but I w that would have taken me by surprise if I could hold up a car. Like, bending steel, okay, one thing. Holding up a car. But, um, so, like, I don't know if this guy died or not. It, it was, it was kind of hazy. He just where, ran off, I think. No, 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 because he's, he's in the car, and the lizard's throwing cars off the bridge, and the lizard throws his car off the bridge, and then Spider-Man shoots the web and catches the car when he when he's in it, and then he like he he's in the car and it like it tips over and he and his head smacks against the windshield, and I'm like, oh he's knocked out, like everyone was saved, and so I, I kept expecting this guy to turn up at some point, like or, like I don't I don't know. But that guy never comes back, and so I was like, is he dead? Because that was just unclear, because if he was dead, like, like if I was shooting this, if he was going to die, I would have had this huge, like, like he'd smack the windshield and you see blood, like, or something, but I don't know, so, I don't know, the evil Indian guy was weird to me. I, <laughs> who the <what> fuck? <laughs> Who is this guy? I don't even think we ever hear his name. No, I, I don't think that, that he just kind of he just kind of wanders in and threatens people. He's like, like if, I, <laughs> I know what you did to the Parkers. I'm not going to explain what, but we like, need those drugs fucking ASAP. Like, damn it, you're going too far, James. Too you know? far, Kurt. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, he just wanders in. Damn you, Mohinder! <laughs> I'm trying to whack. <laughs> you do know you killed Peter's parents. <laughs> Akbar, I told you. <laughs> he's he's the equivalent of the the butler in the third movie. <laughs> oh, by the way, I love that fucking scene in number three, where like fucking uh, uh, not Norman, the other Osborne. Uh, what's his name? Fuck, I can't remember. The other the, the Hobgoblin, yeah, the Green Goblin. Uh, and so the kid, he's like, he's all beat up, his face is burned to shit from a pumpkin bomb. And then the butler goes, he didn't do it, you know. Oh, by the way. Spider-Man didn't kill your father. I saw it. This was years ago. Did I forget to... <laughs> shit, I'm... Dude, I... You went on this whole campaign of revenge and super... My bad. I should have mentioned this at should. some point. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, dude. You were just so happy. You were throwing yourself into your work and making pumpkin bombs. I didn't, anyway. <laughs> so, like, uh, what, what else did I have a problem with? Uh, I can't, uh, there, I, were, there were some other cheesy moments. Oh, yeah, 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 go ahead. Uh, for one, apparently... The greatest alliance you can make is with the train. No, 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 no. We'll, get to, we'll get to that. I, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm going to get to that. Because I'm, I'm leading up to that bit. I'm le you don't even know. Okay. I, I, re I remember the, the problem I had was um, the cops. The, uh, I know that 
people are supposed to initially kind of mistrust Spider-Man. Like, the, the cops. Like, they don't know who this guy is. He's beating people up. He's stringing... You know, he's weird. He's got mutant powers. They don't know what the fuck's going on. They go too far with it. Like, fucking cops are shooting at him when he's clearly unarmed. Uh... Captain Stacy is like, he's public enemy number one. We gotta get Spider-Man. Sir, what about the giant lizard? What the fuck are you smoking, giant lizard? We got it on tape. Fuck you. You know, I, I, I don't get that. Like, he, even when the lizard is actively on a rampage and Spider-Man is actively trying to stop him, they're like, shoot the electro bullets at the guy in red. I'm like, really? It's because Spider-Man made fun of Dennis Leary's fish boots. Yeah, well, like, real fish boots? Shut your son. <laughs> You get that reference. I got You're that awesome. reference. <laughs> I only hear another word about fucking fish boots. <laughs> but yeah, they, they go too far with the cops thing. Where like the cops... And I know, I know. It's to build up that moment where Captain Stacy looks down at Peter and realizes that he's here to help and they do that manly nod of agreement and he goes, Go. And then he swings it. You go get him, son. You know, that they have to have that scene. I get it. But they go too far with it, where the cops... Uh, it, it's too much. And it, it honestly kind of raises... The, 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 biggest, the biggest omission to me is the Daily Bugle. Where, you know, the, the guy who's really starting the muckraking campaign against Spider-Man is J. Jonah Jameson. You, you know? And he's not in this movie. And it's just kind of weird. And, I, I, and again, I know. You can't have J. Jonah Jameson in it unless... Peter Parker's working at the Daily Bugle. And you, all of a sudden you've got these branching subplots and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. So I'm guessing maybe there was something in the initial draft and they right. just cut it. Or I just got a squeaky toy. I'm not throwing the squeaky toy because Daddy's working. Okay? I don't know how to fix this. I'm just saying it was kind of jarring not to have... Because the Daily Bugle is such a huge part of the character of Spider-Man. You know, he, they, they, they actually do a lot to establish the fact that He's he's got he's got this interest in photography. He's bringing the camera with him everywhere. And there's even a scene where he strangely sets up the camera to photograph himself. Why? You know, I, I guess it's cool to have pictures of yourself. But I was like, I think he was trying to get photos of the lizard for the photo, Daily Bugle. Uh, okay, but they never they never even say the words Daily Bugle. You They're know, trying like, to shoehorn that in there, but never pay. Yeah, it that off. that was one of those things where like that you can kind of see the elements of that draft that are still in the movie that must have gotten cut or written out. Again, I don't know how to fix this because if you introduce the bugle, you introduce Jameson, you introduce the photography, and you have to introduce the fact he's got a job in New York. That's a lot, you know. And so this script is already probably a little too long for what it was meant to be. I don't know how you fix that, but it was kind of jarring, and so they kind of transplanted that into the cops, where the cops mistrust Spider-Man and Captain Stacy's on this crusade. It worked for me up to a point, and then it just didn't. Where, like, they're actually, like, shooting live rounds at Spider-Man, who really has done nothing wrong, <laughs> you know? Or at least, you know, he's beaten people up. He's interfered with investigations, I understand that, but this cop, like, pulls up on a motorcycle and just fucking opens fire on the guy. Didn't get that. <laughs> and there, there was another really funny scene, and we're getting to, we're getting to your part, where, like, Spider-Man is swinging through the, swinging down the buildings, and there's cops in a fucking helicopter on the rooftops shooting electro bullets yeah. at Spider-Man. And uh, I was like, I was gonna, I was gonna lean over and ask, do you have many... Lightning bullets in your guns, like when 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 somebody's running away from you, do you load up the, <laughs> the lightning bullets? Because this is new to me. I didn't I didn't know cops had these. It's a special Batman round. It's a special. It's, a, <laughs> it's our special Spider-Man taser rounds. Load up with the, like so like if they. Mm. But that that's I, mean, I, I don't know. mean to keep coming back on it, but that's another thing is they're building up of how. Why I felt the lizard was kind of underdeveloped because of doing this this cop thing on top of everything else. It, it just feels like he wasn't the main villain of this. I didn't get that at all, but okay. <laughs> but okay, um, so we're we're getting up to the. Uh, I've mentioned that. Um, yeah, we're getting up to the point where your favorite part, my favorite part too, because it was so stupid. <laughs> and I'll, I'll let you explain this, but. On the 
Okay. Lizard setting up his doomsday machine. Yeah, he's setting up a doom... By the way, that was so fucking telegraphed. <laughs> okay, well, I gotta go back. There's a scene where, where Kirk Connors is showing Peter the lab, because he's kind of unofficially working there. Like, he showed him the super formula. And so there's, there's this moment where he's showing him all the gizmos. Like, a, a, there's the microscopes, and... And there's the centrifuge, and what's that, Dr. Connors? Oh, very unusual, Parker. Very unusual. It's a doomsday weapon that we developed and then it's stuffed in a glass case. You know, the government decided it was stupid to have a doomsday weapon just lying around, so we locked it up with us with this master lock, and nobody will ever take it. Anyway, going on to this for me. You know, <laughs> golly, that won't factor into the plot at all. They might have well have just, like, wrapped it in hazard tape and have this big comical, like, cartoon bomb on the end of it, you know. It really was stupid. Like, it was some kind of, like, aerosolized, city-destroying weapon that was just... It they, was, they try to explain it like, what if you wanted to reach a bunch of people yeah, yeah. with the polio vaccine yeah, that this aerosols it, but you're just going, yeah, that's gonna be how the... <laughs> Exactly. It was like they're like they were like yes. Um, this this Dalvik device. We we developed this to rapidly dispense this three thousand mile mushroom cloud of any chemical we desire. So of course we decided it would be best used to distribute vaccines, and the government just didn't believe us. <laughs> They were like, that's fucking stupid. What if somebody loaded anthrax into that thing? And we're like, like Robert, that'll happen. Robert Parker thought it might turn to some unethical hands. Yeah, that might uh, <laughs> Robert Parker was like, Robert Parker was like, what if someone loaded anthrax into that? And I was like, oh shit. You gotta die. <laughs> so yeah, they have this fucking super weapon like front and center in this lab. And I'm just going, weapon, doomsday. You know. <laughs> So, Lizard loads this thing on top of a of a big building because just because yeah, <clears throat> and so Spider Man's beat up and he shot up and he he's got to get across the city to the Oscorp building yeah, but he he's just so hurt yeah he's got shot in the leg he's like oh fuck I can't swing because uh, my leg hurts another another <laughs> meanwhile by the way why can't he swing <laughs> when his leg hurts like I get that he's been fucking shot but his <laughs> I, I don't get either but. But also another thing they set up is Spider-Man saves some guy's kid on the yeah, bridge. Yeah, this is in the bridge scene. <clears throat> so now he's all injured and the news helicopters are focused on him. He's like, oh, oh I can't, I can't way, swing. By the way, the news <coughs> coverage is priceless. Because the news coverage spells it out for the guys watching on TV. Because this guy, Spider-Man saved his kid. This guy is watching the TV and he doesn't know what's going on. So the, the news coverage is like, they're like, the lizard's clearly moving towards the Oscorp building and Spider-Man, Spider-Man appears to be chasing him, but he's just so hurt and he's, he looks like he's tired. I don't know if he's going to make it. And if they, only someone would help Spider-Man. And there's help that, there's Spider-Man. A, <laughs> help Spider-Man. And there's help, a, help, help Spider-Man. And there's a general order to evacuate. So everyone, all the, all these people are like, we got to get the fuck out of here. And, and the guy from earlier goes, wait. Yeah, no, no, no. Spider-Man needs me. Spider-Man needs He saved my boy. Uh, he said that yeah, because yeah. he had to establish to everyone else. Yeah. Because we would have forgotten. And he's like, no. Spider-Man needs us. He's like, so, yeah, he's, 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 he's so like... So he's like, get Gary, get Joe, get all the people no, 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 on no. the horn. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. He goes, he, you're close. He goes, he's like, does does Clark still run that crane operation? <laughs> and the guys, the, 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 the Phil is like, yeah. Get him on the phone. Get him now. on the fucking phone. Get him. And he's like, but it's like 11.30 at night. He can't be at the office. Get him. Damn it, man. Use the red phone. <laughs> the emergency crane operator's phone. Get him. <laughs> so Spider-Man needs our help. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing so much, but I was laughing worse in the theater. Because then every crane worker in the city yeah. lines up cranes... All the way from where Spider-Man is to where the Oscorp building is. I'm, we're not joking. This actually has to build a bridge to where Spider-Man yeah, can yeah. go. So like, it's like, it's like Spider-Man, he's like, it's like, oh, my fucking leg. Oh, shit. I can't swing on this. Ah, oh, fuck. Swell of triumphant yeah. music. And then all of a sudden he looks up. He's like, huh? And it's like, oh. Da, 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 da. <laughs> da, 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 da. 
and like you see all the you see all the cranes swinging majestically into place, you, and then they cut to the cockpits of these cranes, and there's a bunch of determined fucking New Yorkers and hard hats going like, "You go get him, you Spider-Man. get him, Spider-Man," because. <laughs> Spider-Man couldn't possibly just swing off the buildings like he always does. I don't know why he forgot how to do that. He, for, he forgot. He's like, oh, my leg hurts. I can't just swing off the buildings like I always fucking do. But it, it, so, uh, so he looks up and he's like, they're helping me. And he, like, he, he starts swinging down the cranes. And then like one of them is too far away. And he fucking fires his web and he misses. And he's going to fall to his death. Shit, shit, shit. He's like, shit. oh! he falls off and you're expecting to hear the splat but you don't hear the splat because all of a sudden this this crane you didn't see looms into view and Spider-Man's hanging on to it and who else should be there <laughs> and it's and it's the dad but it's it's the dad <laughs> crane dad saves Spider-Man crane dad was on that fucking crane and he looks at Spider-Man and he's like thank you crane dad and he's like Spider-Man goes right on man and so, like, they, uh, and, like, that crane guy's like, we're even now, buddy. <laughs> no, because that, that was another reason why I was laughing so hard is, is later when they sign off in the movie, he jumps off and he uses the crane to jump off on. Yeah. That's, he's got a, forget the police, the Air National Guard, you make a friend of the crane union. Oh, but yeah. You have the most powerful ally in the city, my friend. These guys are amazing. They should have called it the Amazing Crane Operators, because, picture this, okay? 11.30, I don't know what's happening, but it's, it's night. It's like dead of night. These guys are in the office for some reason. I, I guess because they like to work at night because there's less chat. So, like, the guy's watching TV. He sees Spider-Man's in trouble, and instinctively he knows... That cranes are the solution to the problem. Yeah, he goes, he goes oh... Spider-Man can't reach the Oscorp building. Wait a minute. If we get Clark on the line, I've got a plan. So, like... I, I wasn't even thinking this. I, uh, I mean, I, I see Spider-Man injured, but my first reaction isn't, he needs cranes. He, he needs them... Because I always... Like you said, he, he has perfectly fine yeah, swinging I, from building to building. He's never demonstrated a problem doing that before. He's so never like, had a problem getting around town ever before. So if, if I'm Crane Dad, <clears throat> I'm looking at the TV going, why does he just fucking swing off the buildings like he always does? <laughs> That's just me, you know? Of course, I, I'm not a crane operator. My first solution to, to a problem is never more cranes, but... Yeah, but it, it, like he puts this together, like he's like, like the 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 news the news reporter was so specific. Crane Dad's smarter than I am. No, 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 because the the it was so helpful that the news reporter like spelled the entire situation out. Like he's heading down Eighth Street towards the Oscorp building, but he can't reach it because he's so hurt. He can't. There's nothing to swing on except all the things he can swing on, and so like the the crane guy's like. If we swung the cranes, he could swing. Like I'm like, this guy's brilliant. <laughs> and then he's like, get Clark on the phone. So then I start picturing what's going. Like the cranes are swinging in the place, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? Because what, what are those conversations? This con like okay, okay. <laughs> I imagine this big fucking Super Mario looking dude in bed, and the phone rings, and he's like, oh, what? Da uh, Clark, it's Phil. Fuck are you doing? Call this. Shut up, dude. Spider Man needs me. Spider Man needs you. What the fuck are you? I drive a fucking crane. I got work at like 5 30 tomorrow. You gotta get into the crane office, dude. You gotta swerve your crane. Swerve it over 8th. Why? He saved my kid. What? <laughs> fuck that, honey. I gotta go. And like. I, I, okay, so, not only are, can, and then he called all his friends. Like, like there must and be. I, I know, this is the same, you're going to say this is the same bridge sequence as yeah, in Spider-Man. No, 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 this it, okay. was worse. This was worse than that scene. And that scene was fucking cloying as hell. That's, that's hokey. I'll give you that. But this one was hokier. No, this that scene was like, you know, honestly, you could see that happening in some bizarre world where, like, 
you know, the New Yorkers like Spider-Man. They see him about to die, and they throw shit. And the, like the scene, you mess with like that. That that line was cheesy, but you at least see- it made more sense too, because oh, it's yeah. just like it's just like. I got shit I can throw at him. Yeah. That's easy enough to figure out. Like, I, I got a bottle. I'll I got it. a bottle. I can throw it and distract him. But this I, I don't like, think this needs cranes. No, this, this would have been like, this, this would have been like, um, uh, what's a good analogy? Like, the, he's on the bridge, and, like, he's about to throw uh, uh, Mary Jane off the bridge. And so, th- then, like, the bridge operator is watching this on the news, and he's like, Spider-Man's in trouble. And then he, like, goes to the the bridge controls and he like raises the bridge and then like that that oh the green goblin is like what the fuck and he's thrown off balance and then spider-man like beats up the green goblin and then he looks at the bridge operator and is like and then the bridge operator goes like okay so like he did like either he calls everyone or there's like some kind of alarm like they got at like uh, there they, 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 there's either like a like a bat phone that instantly rings all the crane operators in New York City or there's like some kind of button. There's a like, nine one one text. It's just yeah, no, like a nine one or like I, I imagine there's like some like switch, like on a wall, like a big red button with a glass shield, like in case of emergency, break glass. So he's like, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> And then all the crane operators are like, they get up out of their beds and they slide down a pole and they like get in their fucking cranes and they're like, where do we need to go? Because these guys mobilize in like a minute. Maybe they had experience before, like with Daredevil or or something like that. These guys, they they go from idle to fully mobilized and briefed on the situation in like a minute. They're unbelievable. These guys got a better response time than the police. That's, anyway, <laughs> no, this is no, this is not anyway. This is huge. This is, I and again, I like this movie, and that scene was horrible. That scene was shit. I laughed at that, and I also rolled my eyes at another one. It's when uh, another one is Uncle Ben leaves Peter a voicemail. This is after they had a fight. Yeah, and so he's. He's just like you need to pick up Mary. Uh, you need to pick up your aunt May at nine. Yeah. And so he leaves a voicemail sometime, and he just ignores it. Yeah. And then after all is said and done, <clears throat> he's like, "I'll listen to my voicemail because I want to hear my my uncle Ben's voice one yeah. more time." And this is this is the hokiest goddamn thing I've ever heard in my life because he wouldn't leave this voicemail, but it's just like. This is the voicemail of A, your father is is President Bartlett. Yeah. And two, if President Bartlett knew he was going to die and delivered one long fucking voicemail. Okay. I agree with you on one count, and I disagree with any other. It was really cheesy. And it should not have been the message that was left when it was left. Meaning the call that Peter gets and he declines is one where he forgets to pick up Aunt May. What it should have been... The voicemail should have been, Hey, when are you picking up your Aunt May? Yeah, that that (laughs) one, yes. But I was thinking it should have been... The next scene is where Peter storms out of the house. Like, he's he's mad at Uncle Ben. He's he's mad at everybody. Nobody's doing shit. You know, he's he's beat up. He's frustrated. All this. Um, So he storms out of the house, and then his Uncle Ben chases after him. What I would have done to make that voicemail make more sense, because you're right, as it is, there's no reason he would have left that voicemail. He would have just been like, hey, it's your Uncle Ben, pick up Aunt May, click buy. You know, that that's like the extent of the voicemail. What it should have been is, like, Peter storms off, and Ben's like, he's, he's just so, I, I don't know what drama, I don't know how to talk to him. Like, he's, he's acting straight, he's never acted like this before. He's, he's mad, and I think it's something to do with his dad, but I don't know. And so, like, maybe Aunt May says, like, he's, you know, he's trying to deal with this raised old memory. You know, whatever. And so, like, he, I would have just had the scene where, like, Ben is walking down the street trying to reach him on the phone, and he won't pick up the phone. And so, like, he tries him three or four times, and finally he just leaves a voicemail where he tries to, like, reason with him over the voicemail, and then he leaves that message where he's like, he's like, you're a good kid, and you're going to pull through. You have so much to contribute. Please come home. You know, something like that. That's when I would have put that scene. And then he dies. But Um, still, it needed to be redone. Because I swear, 
this would be a voicemail you'd leave if you were dying. And it's what's... just like, it, it, it was almost like, you're going through a tough time, Peter, and you're going to have to face them alone, but I know you've got greatness in you, and yeah. you've just got to bring that out. Great responsibility, whatever. And so, like, yeah. <laughs> and, and what's funny is that, it seems like a fairly, because I picked up on that, too. I was like, you know, this is a good speech. It, it was just given at the wrong time, and there was a right time to give it. There was. It was, it was, it was during the scene just before he dies. And this is not knowing that he's going to die, because the emotions there were just appropriate for him to leave that voicemail in that scene. But not before that, and and so you're right, and I, I I can't think that people didn't notice that too, because there's a couple scenes that I that I have to think were reviewed. Hang on, we'll get your ball and I'll throw it. That scene in particular could have easily been reshot. That is not even a trick, you know. You could have shot that green screen somewhere. You didn't need to get him back on the street for that. Just have him like, just have him saying the last line on the phone, click down, you know. Um, and the other scene is the the crane scene. The crane scene. I cannot believe that got past test audiences. It can't have. There's no way. Unless they were like laughing their asses off and the guys on the test, like the guys doing the test were like, they love it. <laughs> nah, they they're they're so the, happy. They wanted to do a bridge scene that they're just like, they appreciate him, but yeah. They yeah, they, they wanted to do, <laughs> I, I, like, you can see what they're trying to do. Where they're trying to draw a couple of parallels here, where the cops don't understand him, but the common man do. You know, like, he's winning over the hearts and minds of New Yorkers because he's saving people when he clearly has a choice. You know, like, he could have gone after the lizard or he saved the kids. He saved the kid. You know, um, they want to draw that parallel where, you know, the man doesn't understand him, like the Daily Bugle and the cops, but the, the people do. They wanted to give closure to, to Bridge Dad. Crazy. They wanted to give close. Like I don't know why they felt they had to close that. Like, of all the things they had to close off, Crane Dad was not one of them. You know, because all he had to be was that scene where he he swings up on the bridge and he gives his kid back and he's like, "I owe you, man. Who are you?" And he goes, "I'm Spider Man." So I was like, "Okay, that like he just had to be that guy where he's like, what's your name, dude?'" And he's like, "Spider." That was it. And so like, no. Apparently, the screen was like, "We need to see this guy again." <laughs> there needs to be a deleted scene where <clears throat> Spider Man's almost gonna get shot by evil Indian guy, <laughs> and then Crane Dad swoops in. No, and he like throws he, a wrecking ball. He throws like a pallet load of like barrels. He, no, he throws his hard hat. <laughs> no. <laughs> What a, he needed to swing a crane full of shit at him. That's yeah, yeah, what, that would that would have been great. That would be like <laughs> like the lizard is beating the shit out of Spider Man on top of the Oscorp building, and it, so it was like he's about to drop a fucking piece of concrete on Spider Man, and then all of a sudden like a fucking crane like smashes Spider uh, smashes the lizard, and then the Crane Dad is like get him, dude, because <laughs> that's what they basically did. Fuck him up. <laughs> Fuck him up, Spider Man. But that was just not a scene that needed closure. Of all the things, like, like evil Indian guy needed closure, because I didn't get that. Like, I, like even... I, I, the, <laughs> that scene is so bad. It's... It really will... It, like... It was a good movie. Despite what you say... I'm saying it's a good movie, too. That's what you don't get. Okay, okay. We got into this weird argument here. Okay, okay, forget it, forget it. I'll <laughs> drop it, I'll drop it. I brought it up, I'll drop it. <clears throat> what I'm saying is... I was really enjoying this movie. Nitpicks aside, you know, evil Indian guy. Did I care that much? No, you know, it was it was the thing I would have closed up. But whatever. I actually really liked the characterization of of even minor characters. I liked Flash. I liked Gwen Stacy. I didn't... I love the the play between Gwen Stacy and Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I really liked. Uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May. I thought, you know, that's, that was actually one of those things where I was like, how is he going to explain this to Aunt May when he comes home fucking savaged by the lizard? Like, I'm not even kidding. He's like, fuck, he's got like three foot fucking claw marks across his chest. He's slashed up to shit. I was like, how the fuck is he going to go home and explain this? <laughs> he doesn't. Well, he doesn't explain it. Like, he's just like, Spider-Man! <laughs> I was like, okay, you, you know, it was better than him like swinging into his room and like trying to pull some kind of Ferris Bueller shit where he's like, he's like, you know, like and he's, yeah, I, I was like, okay, they handled that as well as they could have handled it. You couldn't ask for a better Uncle Ben than fucking Martin Sheen. Yeah. 
seriously, the guy you could put that guy in anything and he'd be awesome in it. But yeah, Martin Sheen, fucking fantastic in that role. I thought the actor who played Spider Man was better. I actually thought, you know, I actually liked Kirk. I liked the play the guy who played the lizard. I thought he was fine. You know, we we disagree on minor points, but I was really liking that movie up to that fucking crane scene, and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> oh god, they could have made that a 60 second sequence where like he just swings to the Oscorp building. <laughs> but no. See what I I like this movie despite <laughs> I'll try to get to the point. I love the acting for the most part. Spider-Man, Gwen Stacy, all the the other characters. I like the action. I I like that they made Spider-Man, you know, he does more flips and kicks yeah. and he's you know, he's very much more active in this movie than, they, than the Spider-Man, you, the other one. Yeah, you reminded me of the one thing I really <clears throat> liked, that the original series was always lacking. This is the one thing that, that has improved, is the, the Spider-Man effects were were not good, and, no, the, and they've been improved yeah, in this one. Okay, that wasn't what I was talking about. <clears throat> You're right, though. The effects the effects in the original Spider-Man movies were, were always not very good. In fact, it was kind of the point where... I, when they were you, cutting when, edge at the time. Or, yeah, yeah, they or, still weren't they were, they were trying to push the boundaries at the time. Yeah. Like, they still weren't that great. That's what I mean when I say they aged. Uh, but they do look a lot... They, they do look great. Um, but that's not what I was talking about. Um, what I was talking about is... The one thing that's improved that was not hardly in the original series at all is the wisecracking. Did you notice that? Yeah. Where Spider-Man is a funny guy... And as he's beating the shit out of people, he's making jokes. He's he's heckling people, essentially, and it throws them off their game. It makes them mad. And he does that in this movie. I was so happy to see that, where, you know, the, the, the car thief, he's just making fun of that guy. And it's funny. That scene is funny, where, like, he's doing that thing where he's, like, sneezing and he shoots the webbing, and he's just, he's just fucking with this guy. And, and even when, the, you know, even when he's trying not to hurt the lizard, he's still, he's still busting the guy's balls, you know. And I, I like that. It was, that was so... That was, Really, that was one of the core elements that really kind of uh, uh, that made me not relate to the movies, the original movies, was the fact that Spider-Man didn't quip at all. Like, there's one scene I think in the original Spider-Man where, uh, like, Green Goblin and Spider-Man are fighting on the side of the, the Daily Bugle, and J. John Jameson says something, and he's like, "Mommy and Daddy are talking." That's like the one quip I ever saw. In that shit, I was like, "That's that's like one of the really is one of the defining characteristics of Spider-Man is his humor." And they, I could have even done with a little more, honestly, but it, it was fine. It was it was it was there, which it wasn't there before, and I was so happy to see that. The action, perfectly fine. I thought it was exciting. I thought it was well choreographed and well done. The action was a little hard to see at times because it was sometimes pretty frantic. There's a lot, you know, there's, when he's swinging around, sometimes, a little hard to follow sometimes, but actually I didn't have a problem with that. You know, it, it, not, not enough where I'd say it was, it was bad. Uh, I really liked that, sh- uh, the, that stuff. And um, even, even the characters that, that, that I thought were a little too much, I thought were still believably done. Like, you know, Captain Stacy, I thought they went too far with him, but honestly the, the, the arc was... The arc was fine. It was finished. You know, they, they wrapped it up. I, they they wanted that moment too much where, like, he has, you know, he has Spider-Man down. He recognizes who he is. He's like, go get him. You know, whatever. I, I honestly think they could have had that moment if they transplanted it to where he was dying on the rooftop. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're watching this review, you know this. Episode. I thought they could have transplanted that moment where he doesn't know it's it, he doesn't know it's Peter until he's dying on the roof and he's like, oh, it's you, dude. You're a good kid, but you gotta stay away from Gwen. You know, I thought but, they could have had that, but it, it was good acting, good yeah. action. It, it, it's just <clears throat> okay. Maybe the thing is, I love the Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. I love Doc Octopus. Mm-hmm. They made them, especially Doc Octopus, the, the tragic character. Mm-hmm. But when we're getting to this movie. I was disappointed by the lizard. Okay. They, I, I thought they were trying to make him a, a, a tragic person, okay. but then they just made him batshit crazy. And I was it, the the I thought the final fight on top of the roof was kind of a letdown. So that's where I'm coming really? from. I like that too. Okay. <laughs> I, I I just felt that the lizard was a letdown compared to the other 
villains in the series. All right. That's the weakest. That's the weak point in this movie for me. He was never exactly well. Okay. Um, if, what's funny is I, I think the best parts of the original Spider-Man movies were the villains. You know, Willem Dafoe was I thought awesome as the Green Goblin, and I thought <laughs> I, you know I, I, I thought Doctor Octopus was a great villain too. I just really thought that almost every other element was lacking. I, I you know, honestly I, I didn't think I thought Tobey Maguire was terrible. I thought Sam Raimi. It was the wrong director by far. I, you know, you know, I'm not saying Sam Raimi's a bad director. I'm just saying he wasn't right for Spider-Man. Um, I didn't like Mary Jane. I really did. You know, and and seriously, of all the cheesy scenes I was picking out of this movie, the original Spider-Man series had just as many, maybe not as bad as the as the fucking crane sequence. But you remember that scene when the Green Goblin like. Uh, the young, uh, Green Goblin is like bombing the hospital, and Aunt May is there, and he's like, "Finish it!" <laughs> I think it's because it, the the movie kind of had a, a campy tone overall, whereas this one it's it's a little bit more. I don't want to yeah. say it's I don't want to say it's darker, but it is I, darker. But yeah, but it I don't want to say that because it makes it seem like it's all dull. Well, and it's depressing, okay. Here, here's what it's, here's what you're saying. It's, it's more it's, serious. It's more it's 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 not campy. Yes. And that's what you're saying is like that's why Sam Raimi was not the ideal director for that because he's gonna make campy stuff and I didn't want to see a campy movie when I saw Spider-Man and this I thought was better because it wasn't campy it took the character seriously it, and I you know as seriously as one can take Spider-Man and you know um I just thought it was well done. I, I I enjoyed it more than I than I ever enjoyed any of the other Spider-Man movies, and I know that's probably heresy, but you know that one scene aside, and uh, oh, what a scene it is, and uh, that's gonna be hard for a lot of people to get over because it's really fucking bad. It's almost worth seeing the movie just to see that scene, almost, <laughs> because really, I don't know if it's just me and you. You know, like, maybe I latched onto this scene and you did, but I it, I wonder if people are going to pull that scene out, if that's going to be, like, a thing now, where, like... It, maybe, I don't think so. You, I, you don't think people I, are going to, like, revile that scene? Because it should be. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> that, just, it's really For bad. some reason, it hit my funny bone. Oh, God, it's bad. <laughs> Well, Oreo is getting impatient, so I think we'll wrap it up. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it as well. I would go see it, and honestly, go. Yes. You should go watch it. Go, go see. I it. like. I've had worse times. Believe me, I've had way worse times. And if nothing else, you can bitch about the Korean scene, which we had plenty of fun doing. Uh, I, I, I do wonder if that'll be a thing. I wonder if anyone else pulled, you know, picked that scene out as being really bad. But it's. I'll tell you, I'm going to remember that scene forever. Because it's... <laughs> wow. I How did that make the final cut? How? My God, how? They could have done anything with that character. They didn't establish that character was a crane operator until that scene. He was wearing a hard hat or something like that. They could have done anything with that. Where, like, <laughs> Spider-Man's been tased, and he's like, Oh, I can't swing, I hurt. Like, I'm hurt, I need to rest. And then some guy pulls up in a taxi. And then the guy's a, t a cab driver, and he's like, get in, Spider-Man. And then they, like, he drives into the building. I would have still thought that was stupid. But at least it wasn't, get the crane guys on the phone. Or, like, maybe the guy, maybe the guy's, like, a, a paramedic or something. Something. Like, you gotta give me something here where, like, even, like, maybe he's just, like, hurt real bad. And the guy's, like... He treats the gunshot wound. He, like, he wraps him up in a bandage or something like that. Like, you could have had that guy, like, Sp that's, he's right outside. And he, like, runs outside and he helps him up or something like that. This fucking crane shit. It, maybe he's a helicopter pilot. <laughs> he, something. We're like, he, you can find other... God, this seems sucked. Trailers. Do you want to say anything about the trailers? Skyfall. Skyfall. That was the first time I'd seen a trailer for Skyfall. I'm... You know, I shouldn't be excited because I thought Quantum of Solace fucking sucked. I still think Daniel Craig is by far the best James Bond, but I, I didn't see enough of... They didn't. Really, it was one of those trailers that didn't show you nothing. It is a teaser in every sense of the word. It was just like... It was just like... It's just Bond's back. Yeah, it's just like he's in, he's in some kind of cell, 
and he's fucking badass. And then you see, like, people driving places, and that's about all you see. There's explosions and shit, you know? He's, like, posing. It, you know, it's, it was... It's one of those trailers that could be anything. I can't tell. Uh, there was The Dark Knight. It was a new trailer for Dark Knight I hadn't seen before. Uh, is it, there's actually this one really cool looking scene I, I, uh, where the, there's like there's like riders and then there's like a thousand fucking cops and they're like charging at each other. It looks fucking cool. I'm like, yeah, the movie looks great. You know, it's it's one of those things where like you know Christopher uh, Christopher Nolan has really done no wrong. I have not really seen a bad Christopher Nolan film, but so like until he proves me wrong, like uh, until he gives me reason not to trust him, dude. This movie looks fucking hardcore. Uh, loving it. Um, what else was Born. there? Bo the Born Legacy, which looks really cool. In fact, I'm actually very impressed with the way they've they've made a Born movie without making a Born movie. And there's they could have made it so cheese, like they could have recast Born, which I think would have been a huge mistake. But they've done it where they've just kind of followed the 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 Treadstone program, you know, the program that made him and and made it separate, but. Still stay kind of... It, I liked it. I, I like the way they're going with this one. And there's so many ways they could have gone wrong with with Born Legacy, and I liked it. So, um, <laughs> she wants the squeaky toy. I'm such a monster. Anyway, that's our opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Maybe not much. I don't know. But uh, I enjoyed myself, and so did he. So, uh, if I... You know, and we're, we're notoriously hard to please, so take that for what it's worth. Have a good one.